Hi, this will be a short introduction to Ossirender. First of all, we're going to start on the Ossirender GitHub page and download everything we need to get this working and also with Blender. So I'm going to navigate over to the releases page, which will also be linked in the description and download the latest version, which is version 1.26.0. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download the EXE, but if you're on Mac, you can get the PKG file and we'll also need this uh, Blender add-on. So I'm going to download this now along with the add-on. I'm going to just open the folder where that's downloaded to and open it. So on Windows, you might get a warning like this. That's just because uh, not many people have downloaded this. So Windows is just being safe, but you can press more info and then run anyway to install the program. And while this is installing, it's very quick. Now we can open it up by just searching Aussie Render, and it's this one here. When you first open Aussie Render, a new project is created and any changes you make can be saved with either Control S or Command S if you're on Mac, or by navigating to File and then Save. I'm just gonna do that now to demonstrate that. So I'm gonna press Control S and then it will open up this window and I can save that to the same folder we're doing everything else. So just save that here. And now that will stay up the top. So whenever I press Control S, it will save to the same place. I'm just going to cover the main areas of the interface, including the main settings, the audio effects, the uh, file specific settings, and then the frequency at the bottom. So the main settings is where you will open and edit and close and also create files. This is kind of your main hub for opening and modifying files. So you can see I've got the cube, which is a default cube currently open at the moment and I can also create new files here. So let's go and create a new text file. Let's call that hello. And now you'll see the uh, text file be rendered on the oscilloscope. You can use J and K to go backwards and forwards between the different open files you've got. So if I wanna go back to the cube, I can just press K uh, and go forward back to the uh, hello by using J. Now on the cube, we can see some of the object file specific settings that are appearing here, like the focal length and uh, different rotations of the object. So you can change that quite easily. And also things like the rotate speed. And you can reset that all there. And also on the right hand side, there's lots of different audio effects, which we will cover later on. At the top menu bar, there's a bunch of different settings that can control how you use Aussie Render. One of the most important ones is the audio settings where you can choose different audio devices here. And if you have a audio interface with lots of uh, outputs, you can also choose one here um, and use this brightness value to control the uh, value of that third audio channel. You can also create a recording here and choose what kind of quality or whatever you want for the uh, bit depth. And you can also do a timed one here. There's some MIDI settings here, which you can look at if you're interested in using MIDI, as well as uh, something that hides all hidden meshes on 3D objects. And some other slider settings, including um, being able to change the minimum and maximum values for all different sliders. And then finally, which some people will find very interesting, is the software oscilloscope. So I'm just going to open this. You can see it looks very similar to the real oscilloscope that I'm also taking video of. So if I change an effect here, it should update here if I move one of these. There you go. And I'll reset that back to normal. If I go back to the text file now, we can change the frequency of the text being drawn, which also changes the quality of the drawing. So if I go really high frequency, you'll see the quality of the drawing sinks dramatically. Whereas if I go down here, it's a lot higher quality, except there's now a lot of flicker. So there's a trade off between the different frequencies there. Um, let's now have a quick look at some of the audio effects available. I'm only going to cover a small selection as there is a lot to choose from and a lot to experiment uh, with. But let's look at a few examples. So Bitcrush applies a pixelation effect and makes the image looks, look very pixelated as you can see here. Um, let's have a look at Wobble as well, which as the name suggests, makes the image wobble a bit. It kind of gives a, a wave by playing a similar um, sine wave to the image. And of course, you can combine both of these effects. So you can see we've got the wobble working at the same time as the bit crush. So let's disable both of those and let's have a quick look at some of the 
other more advanced effects. This is one I've added recently, which turns this image into a 3D image. It treats it as a 3D image. So let's use that here and you can control the different rotations. And just like we did over here with the 3D object, we can start rotating uh, this automatically like this. And yeah, that's just another example of a more recent audio effect that I've added. You can also animate audio effects. So like the, the volume here, which would normally just control the scale of the image, I could start animating this. There's some different animations to choose from. Forward is just a good example. And the slider now changes, rather than changing the actual scale of the, the volume, it's now changing the speed of the animation and the, the animation plays over the whole range of the slider. So if you wanted a different range, you could um, choose a different, where is this? You could choose a different range of values for, uh, for the volume. So if I change this to three, for example, now it's going to be something different and scale over that a bit quicker. So if I change this, you'll hear a different effect. And it, now it sounds a bit more like a beat, right? So you can start combining this with other things and get some interesting effects. I'm going to take a brief look on how you can use Aussie Render with Blender uh, using the add-on that we downloaded earlier. I do have a full tutorial on this, so I encourage you to look at that as well, but let's just have a quick look at this. So I'm going to open up Blender, then let's make a new file and install the, the plugin by going to Edit and then Preferences and Install. I'm going to go to my desktop and choose the zip file that we downloaded a second ago. Um, so we see that's installed correctly. We just need to enable that now. And then if I go onto the render properties tab on the right hand side, you'll see connect to Aussie render. We won't click that yet because we need to do something else first here. So if I press shift A and then select grease pencil and scene line art, you'll see that will place a trace effect on the edges of this object. And if I then go to modify properties, and bake this whole object, I can then go back to the render properties and connect to Aussie render. And now if I turn the audio back up, you will see, and if I open this, you'll see the exact um, thing that the camera is seeing in, Aussie, in uh, Blender, sorry. So now you can animate this Blender scene and create whatever you want and it will update in Aussie render automatically. One final thing I want to show you, which is a new feature we've added, is the edit file button. So I can open any file that I've got currently open. It can be an object file as well. Um, and press edit. And it will open up a text editor for me to change the audio file as much as I want. So if I, for example, start deleting this, you'll see it live update. And I can say, hello. This is... There we go. And I can close this and it will immediately uh, update and save. So if I now save this, it will get saved with the project itself. Each effect on the right hand side can also be controlled using the microphone. So if I enable the wobble effect again and then press microphone, as I speak with the microphone, you'll see it modulate the how, how much uh, wobble is being applied, which is great if you're doing a live performance and you want it to just modulate that as you're uh, playing music. Uh, maybe if you're just using this for visualization. So that's a, that's a simple thing. And that's pretty much all I want to cover in just this really quick overview of the getting started with Aussie Render. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you can make with it. And there's still a lot I haven't covered, notably MIDI support, which can be used to play notes and control the frequency here and also change the slider values. And there's a full overview video on my channel which will showcase that in a bit more detail which I've linked below. The next more advanced video will showcase some of the new Lua script support for making completely custom audio visual sources just like this one that I'm just about to show you. If I create this, this is a really cool effect. It looks a bit better on the real oscilloscope rather than the software just because it's very high frequency. But this is just a simple file that you can see here. Not much code here, a lot of it's explanation. Um, but it's just, yeah, something really simple and very, very powerful that I'm looking to showcase off next. If there's anything else you're wanting me to cover, 
anything that's unclear about this video, please just comment below and I'll be very happy to make a video on it or reply to you. Thanks so much for watching.